The questions God confronted Job with not only reveals God's knowledge and power, but also gave us a vital information about the creation of the world, information that no man can explain. At the end of this video, you will understand why these deep secrets are not available to man and also the present wisdom the Lord has made available for us today. We often ask God questions, and He has all the answers we need. But imagine when God asks us questions about life, about the mystery of death, about creation, about the spiritual world, about heaven and hell. We Can you answer Him? Can any scientist make any attempt to answer these questions? And if you know any, write it down on the comment section. If you can't, let's give the glory to the God of all wisdom and knowledge. There was a man who answered almost all the questions men asked him and defended every matter till the Lord confronted him. His name was Job. He will describe his wisdom in the following words. Unto me men gave ear, and waited, and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. That was how wise he was, but he will score zero from over seventy questions that the Lord asked him. Job was a great servant of God. He was so perfect and upright that the Lord himself boasted before Satan because of Job. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? This man would have to go through the fire of trials in order to prove that he loved God not because of the blessings God gave him, but because of who God is. With God's permission, Satan had to tempt Job. He will loose all he had in one day. He will also be afflicted with terrible sickness. The whole scheme of Satan was to provoke Job to accuse God of unrighteousness. Had he done that, Satan would have won the battle. Probably he must have gone to that conference that day that the sons of God gathered in order to lay accusations on men. But the Lord had to silence him with the upright living of a man. Job was enough for the Lord to put the enemy to silence. Satan was given permission to attack all that he had. Job stood for the Lord and never accused the Lord of unrighteousness. He glorified God in the midst of all his losses and pain. But there was one area God was not pleased with Job, and the Lord will confront him. Job's three friends came and sat on the ground with him for seven days without uttering a word. After seven days, they began to reason with Job. Their whole aim was to convince Job that it was his sin that landed him into trouble with the Lord. Job in self-defense was able to put them to silence. Job did not speak against the Lord, but he spoke against himself and his birth. He cursed the day he was born, and that was not fair to the Lord who made him. Job spoke of his own righteousness also, and defended himself with all his good works. The Lord was not pleased. The Lord came in Job chapter 38 by a whirlwind to challenge the knowledge of Job. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? This was the problem, words without knowledge. Job had many words and was able to respond to every question. With all the wise answers, Job gave his friends that put them to silence. Yet before the Lord, he did not know what he was saying. His words are devoid of knowledge. His words only darken counsel. There was no light in all Job was saying. The questions are so deep, and the only one who has such answers must be the one who created all things. The Lord began to ask him deep questions. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Do you know how its dimensions were determined, and who did the surveying? What supports its foundations, and who laid its cornerstone, as the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy? Who defined the boundaries of the sea as it burst from the womb, and as I clothed it with clouds and thick darkness? For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, Thus far, and no farther will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear, 
and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you ever told the daylight to spread to the ends of the earth, to bring an end to the night's wickedness? For the features of the earth take shape as the light approaches and the dawn is robed in red. The light disturbs the haunts of the wicked and it stops the arm that is raised in violence. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Have you walked about and explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Have you visited the treasuries of the snow? Have you seen where the hail is made and stored? I have reserved it for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Where is the path to the origin of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created a channel for the torrents of rain? Who laid out the path for the lightning? Who makes the rain fall on barren land, in a desert where no one lives? Who sends the rain that satisfies the parched ground and makes the tender grass spring up? Does the rain have a father? Where does dew come from? Who is the mother of the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? For the water turns to ice as hard as rock, and the surface of the water freezes. Can you hold back the movements of the stars? Are you able to restrain the Pleiades or Orion? Can you ensure the proper sequence of the seasons, or guide the constellation of the bear with her cubs across the heavens? Do you know the laws of the universe and how God rules the earth? Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct it? Who gives intuition and instinct? Who is wise enough to count all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven, turning the dry dust to clumps of mud? Can you stalk prey for a lioness and satisfy the young lion's appetites as they lie in their dens or crouch in the thicket? Who provides food for the ravens when their young cry out to God as they wander about in hunger? Out of about more than 70 questions, Job was unable to answer one. If this questions does not make you tremble in fear before the Lord, then you are actually not sincere to acknowledge the almightiness of God. Many people feel they know much about the earth. They debate the Bible and all that the Lord has given to man. The question is, if they actually know so much even more than the word of God, where were they when, they, when the foundations were laid? The Bible is not a scientific book. It does not argue with men. If it was man's idea that was contained at the Bible, you will find the feeling or the ideas of men there. But the Bible transcend its writers, and it was not meant to argue to prove a point, but to simply state God's fact. And that is why you will see Genesis 1 verses 1 states, In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. One verse to state the creation of the heaven and earth. If it was Moses' idea, he will try to explain it to convince men. The book transcends the writers. The Lord used one chapter of the Bible to tell how everything on earth was created. Isn't that marvelous? If we think we know more than God, then we should tell him. We were in so and so place when he was laying the foundations of the earth. God does not also write to satisfy our curiosity. He does not intend to feed our mind with knowledge. He knows the dangers that much knowledge brings. He knows the pride associated with it. He withhold what is not necessary. At least for now, we are not matured enough for these mysteries. It was the quest for knowledge that made man eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that God commanded him not to eat. Today, many in their quest for knowledge have touched dark secrets that have enslaved them. It was the same knowledge that made Lucifer proud, and then he rebelled. He thought he actually knew what the Lord knew. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. He did not know the humility of God. There are levels of knowledge. What the angels know is higher than what the ordinary man knows. And what man knows is higher than what animals know. Who is like the Lord our God? who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. Despise all he knows, yet he humbles himself to associate with men. 
He even took on flesh and died on the cross of Calvary, wore a garment of foolishness in order to save man. Paul puts it well in his letter to the Corinthians, for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Someday we will know him as we are known, but now like Job, let us lay our hands on our mouth and trust the wisdom of God. Let us cling to the wisdom of the cross, for that is the path to the glory of God. God bless you. And if you have been blessed by this video, kindly like it. And if this channel will be helpful to your walk with the Lord, I urge you to subscribe and turn on the notifications icon to know when I upload new videos. Remain blessed.